Okay, hi everyone. Um, I'm Robert Allen. I'm Dr. Marco's producer, and today uh, we're here with Dr. Marco live on uh, a different, new platform. Dr. Marco, right? Glad I like this platform. Today. It's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> so we're we're trying we're doing um, a uh, a short program today, uh, utilizing this new live platform, Blab, which those of you who um, who may be here in the room with us. Um, uh, are familiar with. So if you want to ask any questions, you can go ahead and do that in the, in the comment, in the sidebar. If you, uh, if you just, uh, preface your question with slash Q and then, uh, ask your, your question, um, it will actually, uh, come up as a question and it will, um, we'll be able to spot that, uh, in the comment bar and, um, we'll be, taking your questions if anyone actually wants to pop in on one of the open seats uh, and has a question for Dr. Marco um, or me. I don't know what questions I could answer. Um, you may but, have some good uh, ones. Yeah, I mean, but full disclosure is that I'm a patient of Dr. Marco's as well and Dr. Tim, one of my <laughs> chiropractic team, one of the lucky people on earth that has a chiropractic team. Um, so today we're talking about pain, Dr. Marco, right? Absolutely. Okay. So you, you recently, this was spurred on because you went to a, a seminar recently, correct? Yes. This past weekend, uh, I was at a seminar held in Newark, New Jersey. And uh, the whole weekend, it was a two-day seminar, was focused on uh, pain, you know, a, a neurological approach as well as what other things may cause pain. And a lot of the information wasn't new, but it really like just reiterated some things that I'm going to talk about today that just make perfect sense, but not enough people are really taking that effort and that, that responsibility to change some of the things that need to be changed in their life in order to be pain free. Why do you think that is? Why don't, isn't pain enough? For you know, for people to want to get out of it, you would think that well, just the pain itself would be. You got to think that most people are on this idea of instant relief, so they're looking for that pill or that potion or that that thing that's going to say, "I have pain. Okay, I want to get rid of it." But your body's talking to you when you have pain. I mean, it's not physically talking to you, but it talks to you by giving you signals of pain. So there's a reason why you have pain. Now, when you go to the medical doctor or whoever you want to go to and they give you a pain relief um, drug, you're just covering that signal from the brain. So it's just like saying, like, I'm going to ignore you. I don't really care what you're saying to me. I just want to be out of pain ignoring that there is an underlying cause to that pain. And we're going to discuss a little bit more as we go along. Okay. So I, I think, you know, I'm, I, I suffer from pain, as you know, and uh, you've, you know, you've helped me a great deal uh, in managing that without, without drugs, mm -hmm. which I like. Um, so why don't you take us through uh, what you've prepared uh, for today's presentation? Awesome. Before I do so, do you want to explain to them also that there's an opportunity to ask a question live if they want to? There's an open seat. Yeah, yeah. If anyone you know wants to uh, be on the wants video. to take one of the open seats, um, <laughs> you know, you can you know you can just click on that and and join us and and yeah, I think that's a cool thing. Pick us up on that as we yeah. uh, as we awesome. progress. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, so when so what we have to start off with is when you think about pain, number one, you have to know that there is a cause to that pain and we could clump those into different categories. So there is always a physical aspect of pain. You know, obviously if you bang your elbow against the, the table, you're going to have some pain right there. That would be a mechanical or, or a physical damage to an area that's going to cause in localized inflammation and you're going to have a lot of pain. Um, there's a physical aspect, but then what a lot of people don't realize and maybe don't even uh, focus on is that there is also a component of 
emotions that could cause pain. So the way that we think, the more negative we are and, and the more things that we have in our life that is allowing us to think negatively is going to cause um, more pain. And then also there is a metabolic or a chemical component of pain where the foods or the, the, the drinks that we're putting in our body can reactively cause chronic inflammation in the body. And that's really um, something that that's really something that you got to focus on that a big, big, big cause to pain, chronic or acute, is inflammation. So, yeah, you have this component of, of physical stress. So, you know, you, you get into an accident or you fall, you're going to have that pain. Um, and that's where, you know, you may go see a chiropractor. You may go see a doctor to get a, you know, a, a muscle relaxer or a pain a pain reliever, you know, that's the physical aspect. But what needs to be understood is there is definitely a component of, sorry, just this thing fell out. There's definitely a component of what you're putting in your body that is extremely important. So you got to think metabolically, what are some things that cause our body to become quote unquote inflamed? And then the, the number one thing, especially we were discussing it this weekend, the number one thing is sugar. People these days are just having so much sugar. You want to know the statistic that he gave out this weekend? I don't know. Do I? I don't know if That's you do. It's probably scary, but go ahead. How much sugar a year do you think one person has per year on average? Um, is it in pounds? It is in pounds. Um, I'm going to say 10 pounds of sugar. No. Over 100 to 150 pounds of sugar a day. Wow. I mean, I'm sorry, a year, a year, a year. Wow. That's ridiculous. And what does sugar do? Number one, sugar causes inflammation. Mm -hmm. Number two, sugar also attracts cancer. Cancer cells thrive on sugar. So now you're having that. So when you go and you have that glass of soda or that bottle of soda, what you don't realize is that bottle of soda has about 20 grams of sugar every single time you have it. And your body is not equipped to have that much sugar. You know, now you have some people that have maybe two or three sodas a day or some people that just every time they have a drink, it's, it's a diet Coke or a, or a, or, or a Coke or a Pepsi or, or a Sprite or whatever it is. And, and you know, they, the, the marketing world has really tricked us by saying, Oh, well don't have so many calories. Let's get you on diet soda where unfortunately diet soda is even worse than regular soda because diet soda has artificial sugars. Artificial sugars are even more worse than the regular sugars that we're eating. So there's an aspect of that that needs to be approached. You know, that you need to decrease your sugar. You need to decrease your intake of your bad carbohydrates. That's your wheats, that's your, your breads, your pastas, all that is pro-inflammatory to the body. We don't want chronic inflammation. So if you're somebody that, that is dealing with on and off pain and, and it comes and goes and Sometimes you feel great. And then all of a sudden, like the next you wake up one morning and you're like, man, I feel horrible, but I didn't do anything. I didn't fall. I didn't have an accident. I didn't do anything. So it's a signal that your body is inflamed in some way, whether it is physical, chemical, emotional, or all of the above. So we need to really understand that pain is not just a signal that you want to shut off. Right. It's telling you that there's aspects of your life that you need to balance. Because you know? the cause is still there. It doesn't yeah, the cause just mask there, it. You know? now, yeah. now, a question came up uh, yeah. from Luke, at which I was thinking, so thanks, Luke, for bringing that up. But what about, uh, like, sugar from fruit? Uh, yeah. So, so how, here, does, how does the body differentiate between the sugars, and are some sugars better than others? Yeah, So, so sugar – is, I mean, there, there is uh, sugar in fruit. It's called fructose. Mm -hmm. um, you don't want a lot of sugar. There's certain fruits that are higher in sugar than others. 
So I like to tell people that if you want sugar, I mean, sorry, if you want fruit, you're going to want to stick with anything that says the word berry in it because berries are not as high in that glycemic index. Um, so you want to have your strawberries, you want to have your your raspberries, your blueberries, your blackberries, acai berry is a, a very high antioxidant berry. Um, so when I say go with the fruits, you want to go with those type of fruits over, you know, the more sugary fruits like a banana. It's great for you, but it does have a higher glycemic index. Um, and then you got your other fruits like um, your, your your pears and your apples and stuff. They're, they're good for you, but they're higher in that fructose. So I like to say when I say eat a lot of fruits and vegetables, eat a lot of vegetables and fruits that start with berry or end with berry. It's a good it's a good rule of thumb. So there is a component of that. And we're not saying don't have any sugar. We're just not saying don't have that excess sugar from the sodas and the breads and all that stuff, because you realize carb the bad carbohydrates break down into our body into sugar. Okay. So so knowing the type of sugar is is important. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And then artificial sugars should be 100% out of everybody's diet. And, and artificial sugars are your uh, sucralose, your aspartame, your sucrose, all of those type of things that you look inside of um, on, on the labels. Mm -hmm. You want to see anything like that. You know, you want you want to stay away from your Splendas. You want to stay away from your sweet and lows. Um, they've, they've made us think that, oh, they're lower in calories, so there's good for us. Mm -hmm. But it's not the calories that are killing us. It's the artificial stuff that we're putting in our body. So natural sweeteners, or so things yeah, like natural, honey, honey and agave nectar and things exactly. like that are much better sugars, sweeteners oh God, to use. Exactly. Um, yeah. Yeah, so there's, there's that component um, of pain. And then you got to think emotionally. You know, we, we, people kind of try to turn a, turn a blind eye to, to emotion. You know, they don't think that the way that they think could affect their body. Mm -hmm. But if you, you know, when you look at people's lives that are just on fire, they're, they're really positive and they're happy and everything in their life just seems like it's perfect. Well, because they have this positive attitude of life and it's the life, you know, life obviously brings back positive energy back to them. But then you go on the flip end and you have somebody that just, is just angry at the world. Like something happened to them maybe when they were younger, it could have been something you know, some emotional or, or physical abuse that could have just destroyed their confidence. And now they live this life of just anger, you know, and they're angry at the world and they're angry at, you know, the people around them and, and everything they do is there's an excuse for this and there's an excuse for that. Believe it or not, those type of people will actually start to manifest pain because your body can't, your body starts to, to secrete a lot of cortisol. You know, when, when we're stressed, our body secretes cortisol. Cortisol is good for you when it's in a, 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 a moderate amount. But when you have this chronic stress, that cortisol not only causes inflammation, but it also makes us store our food. So then we start to gain weight. We start to get fatter. Now, all of a sudden, we're adding in all of this, you know, inflammation. Plus, now you're adding on weight. Plus, now you're most likely, if you're that negative, you're not exercising. So now you're not getting, so it's this just array of events that starts all because you started to get a little bit more on the depressed side. Right. And, and it's, it's interesting because I'm, I'm experiencing the opposite right now, because when you do the opposite of what you're talking about, mm -hmm. you start to feel a whole lot better. I mean, yeah. I've made life changes over these last four and a half months that have, set me in a much different direction than when I was, was heading, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. five months ago. Oh, exactly. Um, so it's all, it's all reversible. Mm -hmm. you, can, no, you're right. you can change all of that. Yeah, the, your life and, and health is your responsibility. You know, your responsibility to care for yourself. You can either make the right decisions or the wrong decisions or not the best decisions. Right. So, you know, and when you think of uh, the, what they give people that have chronic pain, you know, what of, one of the most popular drugs that they give somebody when they're on cro in chronic pain? What is it? Ibuprofen? Well, yeah, that's to help with the inflammation. Right. There's another drug okay. you don't even think about, <clears throat> an antidepressant. Oh, really? Yes. Hmm. So they're giving you an antidepressant because they know chronic pain has a component 
that that pain will actually go to the center in our brain that could cause us to start to get emotionally attached to this. And then now we start to get a uh, decrease in our you know, positivity and we start to think more negatively. And now all of a sudden they want to prevent that depression from occurring. And now all of a sudden they're putting on an antidepressant. Yeah. And it's just, it's just, and it's just sad that, that people get down that road rather than having, you know, a, a, an intervention, you know, of you changing your lifestyle because it really is a lifestyle driven thing. You know, there's no, unless you get into a traumatic, traumatic thing, um, like a, like an accident or something like that, you know, most people's pain is just lifestyle driven. You know, and, and we got to go back to that physical component. I mean, I'm a chiropractor. I got to throw it out there. Our posture is really, really important to our body. Your posture isn't just the way you sit or stand. You know, your posture is really something that is telling you from the outside what your spine looks like. Now, why is your spine even important? It is your protective covering over that nervous system. Your nervous system controls everything about you. So whether, whether it's the movements that you make, the, the, the sensations that you feel, the thoughts that you have, that nervous system controls that. So when you have these bad positions of, those, of that posture, you are affecting that nervous system. And that's really, really, really important to understand that there is a component of posture or spinal stress that is also going to um, be a part of chronic pain. And it's not something that you know, you're going to feel all the time. You know, I, I was talking to a patient yesterday about the difference between what's called a macro trauma or a micro trauma. So a macro trauma is your big accidents that you know you got into. You know, you fell and you hit your elbow, you know, or you got into a car accident or you, you know, you got, you were in a football game and somebody knocked you out. You know, that's a macro trauma. It's a really big thing that happened. But then our body also has these little micro traumas that we don't really realize are kind of damaging us. But those micro traumas actually could be more damaging in the long run than the macro trauma. So a micro trauma could be bad posture. You know, you sit at your desk all day long and you have this posture where your head's forward and you're really staring at the screen. And all of a sudden now you're putting those micro traumas on the muscles that are trying to hold your posture upright. You know, so you got that. And then you also have your macro traumas of just, you know, you, you, you slipped off the curb and like just twisted yourself. You know, you don't think it's something that happened. But, you know, all of a sudden, a couple of days later, there's a little localized inflammatory process that occurs right in that area that got shifted really quick. And all of a sudden, it's like, I didn't do anything, but I have this pain back here. And if you're not addressing that, you know, through chiropractic, you're really missing a big component of pain relief. You know, so one of the main, main, main uh, things in our body that, that sends a signal to our brain that says we're in pain, it's, it's, it's a receptor called a nociceptor. A nociceptor is actually <clears throat> uh, it's a pain receptor so there's different receptors in our body we're, our body's electric it's got different things going you know we're, we're really it's like a highway of cars going everywhere really fast um and there's different speeds on those things so some cars are like ferraris they go really fast other ones are like you know smaller cars that are kind of just floating along um pain fibers are actually very slow you may not realize that but they're very slow uh fibers the more faster fibers are what's called your mechanoreceptors or your proprioceptors. Your mechanoreceptors and proprioceptors are these, these receptors that detect movement. So when you have proper motion of the body or when you really are having a uh, proper motion of those joints, that mechanoreceptor will override that pain receptor. That's why a chiropractic adjustment works because you, the, the adjustment will actually have um, more motion, get more motion in that spine, and now you're no longer getting those nociceptive information. You're actually getting those mechanoreceptive information going. So having that proper motion is important. And the proprioceptors, one of the main components of that is in our postural muscles. So if we have bad posture, we're not going to get good firing of those receptors. And then all of a sudden, that level, so you got to think it's like a, like a teeter-totter. The more nociceptors we have, and the less mechanoreceptors have, the more pain we're going to feel. The more motion we start to get in our body, the more we move our body, now the mechanoreceptors come up and the pain receptors go down. So it, that's why, like, 
in saying sports, you know, when somebody said like sprains their ankle or, or they, they kind of fall and they hurt themselves, you know, the coach in the past said, Oh, just walk it off, walk it off. Why do you think they're saying walk it off? Because when you're walking it, you're getting that motion and you're getting those mechanoreceptors to go and really get that pain level down. So it really has a component. There's a, there's a neurological component of this, you know, of, of just getting more motion so that you can get the pain fibers to come down. So that's more of a physical neurological component in addition to the emotional component, in addition to the n- nutritional component. So there's really a lot of components to pain. It's not just, you know, ouch, I hit my elbow, I have pain. Right, right, right. Okay, that, that, that's great stuff. Let, let's address a couple of the things that yeah. have been popping up in the uh, in the chat. Darwin, thanks for your your comments and, and the link to that documentary. Um, Michelle had a, a question, uh, when you were talking about the micro and macro, um, uh, injuries, what is two herniated lumbar sciatic discs? Uh, what would that be classified as micro or macro? So you can have herniated discs from a macro trauma or a micro trauma. So say you get into a car accident or you fell off a, 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 a down a staircase, that is a macro trauma that could cause a herniated disc. But believe it or not, that's less common than the real causes to a uh, herniated disc, which is usually a long-standing abnormal posture that are giving those micro traumas. So there's proper curves that we're supposed to have in our body. Let's say um, your neck has a curve that goes backwards like a C and also in your lower back. So when you lose those proper curves, and the only way you would know about this is if you had a, a proper x-ray taken and analyzed, um, When you have those losses of those curves, so let's say your head comes forward or you lose that proper curve in that lower back, those discs have chronic strain on it. And that macro trauma of just living your life with not the proper curve is going to slowly start to make those discs degenerate and it can cause a herniation. So it's in both categories. It could be a macro trauma that you had a car accident or you had some type of accident or it could be micro traumas of you've had an underlying postural abnormality that you are not addressing, whether you know it or not. You know, you don't have to have pain to have bad posture. There's a lot of people out there that walk around every day pain-free but have bad posture. And it's just like kind of a ticking time bomb. It's like they have these little macro trauma, micro trauma, micro trauma, and all of a sudden they go pick up that pencil off the ground that you should be able to pick up a pencil off the ground without blowing out your back. You know, absolutely. so that's really just showing that you've had this stress for so long and then all of a sudden you pick up that pen and it's like, oh, what was that? I heard a pop or something. But yeah. it's not because you bent down and picked up that pen. It's because you've had this trauma. And then all of a sudden that was like the, the last straw that the last broke straw. Down back. Right. As they say. You know, now, yeah. Michelle had asked, though, could that come from childbirth? Could that? Can the herniated that, disc that trauma, yeah. mm-hmm. Meaning like when you were when you were being birthed or from childbirth? Like, no, I guess you, when you're giving, I don't know, Michelle, can you clarify? Is it more about from like giving, from giving birth? From giving from, birth. From can her giving a, birth. Can you get a herniated disc from giving birth? From the actual process of giving birth, that's yeah, unlikely. I that. But you but what happens when you are pregnant, you change your biomechanics of your spine. So the number one thing that happens when we start to get when when a, when a woman is pregnant, obviously they have a fetus growing in them and their belly is growing. But what that does is it changes their center of gravity, so it shifts their body forward. So what they have to do reflexively is arch their lower back, and then they increase that curve in that lower back. So now if you have underlying postural stresses under there, and then now you're changing that, you can put a stress on that body. So yes, there, it, it, pregnancy can exacerbate underlying problems, but the actual birthing process when you're lying there is probably unlikely to cause that. But if you weren't being adjusted by a chiropractor during the birthing process or during the pregnancy, um, you can get stresses that you didn't have before you were pregnant. Does that make sense? Uh, okay. If you could see um, what Michelle just posted there in the comments. Oh, I was thinking of that. L4 and L5 and L5 is one herniations and neuropathy. Okay. Yeah. So, there, so there's already an underlying stress there. You know, you, you don't have that herniated disc from one event. So if, if she's never seen a chiropractor that is going to address that, you know, check the posture, you know, take an x-ray of that lower back, see this, see, you know, does she have a increased curve in the lower back, which is called a hyperlordosis? Do they, does she have 
a hypolordosis of the lumbar spine, which is a decreased curve? Um, does she have a scoliosis where she shifts her body to a certain side? Uh, there's a different, you, you have to really understand what the underlying stresses are in the body. And that's why it's super duper important. Good. I'm glad you don't have a scoliosis, but I'm just throwing things out there that, you know, there, that, that are things that stress that body. And that's why I, uh, you know, that's why it's, it's important for, to see a chiropractor regularly. You know, there's a lot of people that think you only go to the chiropractor when you have an injury, but chiropractic is as important as going to the gym regularly and putting good food inside of you and having a positive emotional status. Um, it's, it's something that allows your body to do what it does best, and that's heal. When you have these stresses, it's the body breaking down over time, and we wouldn't want that to happen. Right. Right. And I've seen pregnant women in your office. Yes. We, right? you can, we just you had two of them adjusted. within like a month of each other, and it was so awesome. And one was a boy, one was a girl. I was trying to get the names out of them. They wouldn't, they wouldn't share it. They're like, oh, we're not giving the name. I was like, God, I just want to know the name. <laughs> <clears throat> Yeah, I went to a chiropractor, though. Now, while, while Dr. Marco's checking out some of these comments, if there's yeah. anyone that wants to ju jump into any of the open seats, don't jump. You might hurt yourself. But Would uh, Michelle want to join the open seat, yeah. or is that putting her on the spot? I don't know. Well, they're, they're open. We can – oh, here she comes. Hi. Hi, Michelle. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Excellent. Good to see you. Nice to see you too. Thanks for letting me jump in. Oh my God. Absolutely. So you get four people in here. So I'm happy. So yeah, so you're, so I don't know what that other chiropractor did. Sometimes there's uh, different, let's say techniques out there that people, you know, that have in chiropractic. So I'm not sure. Did that chiropractor that you saw, did he take x-rays? Yes, it was a female. And yes, I had x-rays. Um, she said there was, my spine was properly aligned. Okay. Um, she said she saw that my coccyx was a little cocked mm -hmm. to the right to where she was asking me if I was sort of walking with a little limp. Okay. Um, I, I don't walk with a limp. I don't think, um, okay. I don't have pain on specific sides of my feet, maybe because I'm putting more pressure on mm -hmm. that compared to the other. Um, I've never in a million years had issues with my back ever. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And then my last pregnancy five years ago, after I had given birth, within a couple of months, uh, something popped in my back mm. and the, the sciatic nerve down the back of my right leg and foot went completely out and I fell to the floor. Okay. And I've had issues ever since then. I've had yeah. MRIs. I've had CAT scans with contrast. I've yeah. seen chiropractors and pain management. Yeah. I've had yeah. you know, those injections in your back that are doing more damage to your bones than anything. Absolutely. Um, my, my issue with, now I've only went to a chiropractor once uh -huh. because after that initial adjustment with her, uh -huh. I left that day and I felt great mm -hmm. immediately afterwards. And I felt a little bit more relaxed. Mm -hmm. But that evening, it felt like my entire body from head to foot tightened up. just completely tightened up and was inflamed. And I was mm -hmm. in so much pain. Mm -hmm. I was in tears. Yeah. Now, what would cause that? So you got to think what we brought back the other, you know, from before. There's There's a physical component, but then there's also, you know, metabolic and emotional so you may already have inflammation due to diet i'm not saying you do but you may have it due to diet so when he when she approached the chiropractic aspect she adjusted you so yeah. she got those joints moving but did she um teach you anything to do at home like for instance everybody that leaves our office we say after their first visit you're you might get sore but what you want to do is you want to ice as much as you could for the next you know, day or two. I don't know if she said that to you, but you want to ice as much as you could because that will help bring down that inflammation. Um, but also, if you're really tight, like if you have those herniated discs, um, there might be instability in there. Sometimes an adjustment could actually not be the first approach you want to take because there might not be stability. So you right. might have a, a, a situation where maybe you need something to relax those muscles. So you might want an electrical stimulation 
you know, with ice or something like that. So it all depends on every case is different, you know, person to person. But uh, the fact that you never went back again, you know, it tends to happen that after the first visit, you might be sore. I mean, you're, you, you were talking about pain. So if something else was going on that we didn't really know or address. But there is a component of uh, soreness, you know, just like if you went to the gym and you worked out really hard, you're going to go the next day, you're going to feel sore. But it doesn't mean you damaged something. It just means that you worked those muscles to the point where now there's some soreness. Right. So uh, sometimes you have to kind of get over the hump in the first say week or so to you know see if the, the the muscle spasms and the inflammation will calm down. So you definitely should have you know continued to ice as much as you could and maybe even calm those muscles down with some electrical stimulation or. Some people use, uh, you know, uh, laser and stuff like that to help bring down that localized information. So there's there's all different ways of addressing that. Uh, and I'm, I'm sorry you had a bad experience. But uh, if I was near you, I don't know if I am. I would love to <laughs> help you. But if not, I could find somebody closer to you if you need somebody. I'm, I'm located in Wisconsin. Where are you at? Okay, I'm in New Jersey, so that's a little bit further away. <laughs> I, I was born and raised in New Jersey. Oh, so you just got to come back and see the family, and then we'll take care yeah. of you. <laughs> what part of New Jersey are you in? Where I'm in North, North New Jersey, so my okay. practice is in Caldwell. Okay, okay. I was born and raised in Pisataway. Okay, yeah. So that's not that's too far. Probably like a half hour away. Yeah. So... Well, yeah, so I mean, there's there's different techniques, like I said, out there in chiropractic. Uh, one one approach you might want to look for is uh, there's a technique out there called CBP, and it's a postural corrective approach. It's kind of what we fit, focus on in our office, and that really gets you know down to the uh, the specific posture that you're dealing with and how to correct it. And and I want to kind of step back a second. I forgot to mention this: uh, when people have chronic lower back pain or, or lower back pain, if did she take an x-ray of just your lower back or did she also get your neck? She did my entire spine. She did, okay, because there is a very big component of neck and shoulder stress that mm -hmm. also puts a chronic stress in that lower back. Mm -hmm. So if you have a posture where your head comes forward off the shoulders, okay. it's called a forward head translation, that's gonna put chronic stress on the mid back and lower back. So mm -hmm. I can't see you from here, but you know, I, it, if you have that posture, that could be an underlying cause to it, and it might be just you're your feeling it in the lower back. Does that make sense? Yeah. What what was the, what was that called again? It's called it's called a forward head translation. Forward head translation. I mean, it's just mean like a translation is a linear movement. So we are our, 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 we have an ability to translate our head left, right, back, or forward. So if you have a forward head posture. Or, they, they, I mean, if you want to go in a little bit more technical, they call it an anterior head translation, whatever you want to call it. It just means that your head is coming off the shoulders. The, to what, the way you find that out, have somebody look at your posture. The middle of the ear is supposed to be aligned with the middle of the shoulder. If it is not, you're probably forward, and that would cause a kind of chronic stress. She did say that I had that issue with my neck. But she did not address it? No. She just adjusted me. So that's probably your main reason why you have that lower back thing going on is, is what's going on above it, not what's going on at that location. So she should have taught you something maybe to do at home to start to correct that forward posture. She had said that it was probably triggered by me being a stomach sleeper. Well, stomach sleeping is the uh, worst position you could sleep in. You want to be on the side or the back. So when you sleep on the stomach, what you're doing is you're taking out all those natural curves that you have. So we have a natural curve in, like I said, going backwards in the neck, forwards in the mid back, backwards in the lower back. When you lie on your stomach, those curves straighten out. Okay. So when you lie on your side, you can put a pillow between your legs for comfort. Now right. you can ha now you can uh, support those proper curves. And then when you're on your back. You could put a pillow underneath your knees and put something underneath your neck to support that. That's the most ideal position. But you got to realize for you, those type of things are not going to be as important as you probably have a lot of muscle spasm. You probably have a lot of inflammation in the area. You, you, you probably have things that need to be calmed down before you do anything corrective. Right. So I know, I know recently um, 
when I'm laying, I now currently lay either on my back or on my side with okay. some tucked in between my legs. Mm -hmm. Um, because laying on my stomach, I can't ever get up. My back, my lower back actually feels like it's locked. Yeah, it um, probably, there probably is that component of that. So I would, I mean, if you want me to try to find you somebody, um, you could email me or, you know, Robert, give, give, give the information. You could email me your information of where you live, like your zip code, and I could try to find somebody in your area that does something similar to what we do. Okay. And I could put you in that direction. You're in Wisconsin. I'm just trying to think. See, I don't know anybody off the top of my head for that, but um, there's a there's a website that I could send you. Actually, you know, you could you you have a pen right there, right yep. down this website. C okay. C B P, like Charlie, Bobby, Paul. Okay. C B P Patient. Dot com, and that's actually a directory of all the people that do C B P. This okay. postural approach. L look your zip code up and see who's in the area and okay. contact them, and they might be a better fit for you. You know, not all chiropractors are good fits for everybody. So right. the technique that she did may work for other people, but may not have worked for your situation. Or maybe you got spooked because you were hurt and you didn't give a chance to go back. I did. I did. I, I yeah, panicked I thinking, no. It's common. Nobody ever. She didn't advise me that I would even be sore afterward. Yeah. So when I, when I felt the way that I did... I said, no, she hurt me. Something's yeah. not right. I'm trying to eliminate my pain. I'm not trying to gain yeah. more. So I, no, stopped, I understand. But, it's definitely you know, scary. And, and, you know, there's a component of, of fear that holds us back from doing something. You know, so I don't want you to be afraid of chiropractic. I mean, I, I have a lot of patients that come in with your situation. And, yeah, sometimes they're sore and, and they're hurting. But you, it, you have to understand that there's a, there's a time process to this. It takes time to heal. There's no magic potion. There's no magic adjustment. There's no magical thing that you're going to go in one day and you're going to feel like a new person the next day. There is a time process to this. And it usually takes, <clears throat> if there's herniated discs or something like that, anywhere from two to four weeks to really start to feel 100%. So okay. you, know, you got to just kind of try to trust in your body and understand that you will heal. You just need to take time. Makes sense. Yeah. It makes sense. Thanks for explaining that to me. Absolutely. Now, yeah. I'm gonna throw, I'm gonna throw another curveball at you in, in regards to my neck. Um, now that I'm sleeping on my side or my back, mm -hmm. I'm noticing now my face and my lips go numb, and then both my arms go numb. Okay. So, the, so you have a component of the nerves being affected in that neck, not because of the way you okay. change your sleep, but you already have underlying stuff in there. So it's important okay. to find somebody that's going to address the whole structural situation because if okay. we have some inflammation in those joints, if the joints aren't moving very well, if you have that forward posture, I mean, there's a proper curve, like I said, that you're supposed to have. If that curve is straightened or even curving in the wrong direction, you're having a chronic stress on those nerves and it could cause, you know, facial symptoms. It could cause pain in the arms. It could cause these type of things. In fact, if you don't mind me sharing, Robert, his son used to come in. His, his son used to come in, and he would have this twitch in his face. That nobody, you know, knew what it was. Every time he ate, it twitched like this. And when I checked out his neck, it was a rock. It was so tight and inflamed, right in that upper part of the neck. We started to adjust him. Within a week or two later, that started to go away. So it just and it's, gone. And it's, it's, and it's completely gone, gone completely. Now. But he didn't do anything. He didn't have an injury. It's just that that neck just tightened up, and he started getting these facial symptoms of this numbness, like and this twitching right in the face every time he chewed. You know, so yep. you definitely there's definitely some things you want to address, and uh, don't ignore it, and don't be scared of, you know, chiropractic. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you for letting me jump in here and pick your brain about Absolutely. this. Absolutely, this is what I do. I love this stuff. <laughs> Well, well, thank you for letting me uh, step in. I'm going to step out All now, right. and I'm going to just walk the sidelines. Enjoy yourself. Thanks, Michelle. Um, good. Well, I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad we were. Uh, you were able to help her. Yeah. I mean, hey, Darwin. I, thanks for your. Uh, thank you so much for your comments. Um, yeah. If anyone else has a question or anything, they want to jump in an open seat. You can. You can do that. Um, yeah, I know. We uh, said was there was anything else you wanted to cover on on this subject I of mean, pain? I could go on for hours, so I don't know if you want to open that door. <laughs> but 
I mean, there's, I, I went a lot longer than we expected. We said about 15 minutes. We're looking at about a half hour now, but I mean, the information has to be out there. Yeah. And I'm here, sure. to, I'm here to be a, a resource for anybody that just needs to pick the brain and figure it out because there's more to pain than just, ouch, I have pain. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I agree. And, and, you know, we are, you know, just speaking from personal experience, I mean, everyone in my household, you know, has chiropractic uh, adjustments on a regular basis. I mean, my kids not as much because they're they're away at school and and can't come in. But you know, they're you know, I'm I'm a testament to the fact that you know having your posture monitored, mm -hmm. which is what you do. You know, you look at me every time I walk in, and you can see just from looking at me where my pain is right you know when i'm having a bad day with my hip because of the way i'm i'm standing and and you know i don't even notice that you know per se but you can sense that right away and in, yeah. in my my posture and and yeah. um you know i know that it's important for you to kind of realign me yeah so the so the common things that that ruin our posture is the things we do every day unfortunately so sit, the way you sit at your desk with your computer um, you looking know, down you, at your phone, yeah, you looking down at your phone and looking now, now, now we're a digital world. We have iPads and smartphones and everything. Everything is promoting that forward posture on when the body wants to be that upright, proper posture. So the more we're looking down, the more we're not using those back extensor muscles, they're called. So they start to weaken and all the muscles, you know, the flexor muscles they are called start to shrink, you know, tighten. And now you're forward like this. And right. that's something that needs to, you know, always be uh, addressed or always be aware of is, you know, what you're doing at that moment. Think of, you know, when you're sitting there at your desk, you know, do you feel like you're forward like this? Is your head coming forward? You know, is your computer in front of you or is it to the side and you're constantly going like this to the right. side? Or is it down? I mean, we had to do that just like, you know, we, everyone, you know, lots of people work from laptops these days. Yeah. And just the, the, the design of the laptop is that it's down low. Yeah. And you could see that from people right here on Blab that, um, okay, Michelle, thanks. We hope to see you again. Thanks, Michelle. Um, Have a good night. So, you know, that that whole idea, like, you know, before we did this, you had, a, you know, your laptop is propped up, what, on a couple of, of, of boxes or blocks, you know, that, you, that you've got there in order to bring it. I and mean, I'm on a big 27-inch iMac, so my screen is is here. Okay. And I, I almost find myself, um, you know, this it's such a big screen, you know, that I'm, l like, looking up yeah. more so, but which I think is better, right, mm -hmm. to be looking yeah. up. Well, well, the ideal position is you want the middle of the screen to be right at the middle of your eyes or slightly above. So if you right. have something lower, it's going to have you putting your head and neck forward. So, like, I'm on a laptop right now. I don't have, you know, the Mac like you do right now but I have it propped up on a big box. So I am, you know, centered to it. And that's, you have to do it. I mean, even if you have to work on a laptop, you know, just make it where you can lift it up. And sometimes people say to me, well, if I lift it up, then I'm gonna be like this up on my hands. Well, no, you can actually get a wireless keyboard and a wireless mouse, put that down, and now you're using it like a desktop but it's right. a, but it's a laptop. Right, Just you're just using the monitor, on, or are you getting a separate monitor yeah. connected to your laptop so you can keep your laptop off to the side exactly um, and not do that what now a, a lot of people i see and i've even toyed with this idea um what about these stand-up desks where I mean, you're working they're they're high and you're you know i mean you work at the office you have yeah. your computer yeah. propped up or you're standing is that is our posture i mean obviously it's different when we're standing and working versus yeah sitting. i mean standing a standing desk is, is kind of something that's becoming more popular now because people are starting to realize that inactivity is not good for us. So when you're sitting at a desk for eight hours to 10 hours a day, that inactivity is going to be hurtful in the long run. So a lot of people are starting to jump on the boat of activity and exercise and all that stuff. So it is smarter to be standing up. And if you do stand up, you obviously still want to keep that in mind of, you know, I, I, you could stand up, but you don't want the, you know, the computer down low. You want it to be eye level. Right. So, but that, that's going to be uh, better for you because the seated position is the position that you have the most compression on your lower back. So you definitely want to have a stand up position. So that'd be great. They're starting to go now down towards like people, if they're sitting for a long period of time, sitting on one of those exercise balls, mm -hmm. you, know, you can actually find right. online, they have, 
chairs that are the extra, that's even something because that will engage your core while you're sitting there. And at least it's something rather than being just totally inactive. Right. And then of course, you know, you should be getting up periodically from sitting at your desk yeah, uh, and stretching a little bit or just, you know, walking, you know, outside for, for a bit and, and you know, just do that. It's not healthy for anyone, you Absolutely. know, to be sitting for hours and hours. It tell you that on an airplane, right? On a long flight, you shouldn't mm -hmm. be yeah. sitting for too long because that exactly. can cause problems in, in circulatory, mm -hmm. circulatory systems, right? Exactly. You so, get up and move around a little bit. Yeah. So I try to tell people if you're going to sit at a desk for six to eight hours a day, um, every hour, just go take a walk for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, you know, go to the bathroom, go get a drink of water, um, you know, just to keep that mobility. Because like, like I said earlier, that mobility is what will keep down that pain level. You know, the more mobile we are, the more active we are. That pain oh, yeah. Level. I mean, I see it. If I'm sitting for a long time, mm -hmm. it, you know, I'm stiff. I get up and it, you know, yeah. it takes me two or three steps to Loosen up. Kind of get the blood, you know, flowing, mm -hmm. you know, again. So, um, yeah, I think, you know, being more mobile is better than being less. Mm -hmm. For sure. Absolutely. For sure. Um, so I think that was good. I don't know if there are any other questions or comments uh, or if anyone wanted to pop in. We're going to probably start wrapping things up if if people don't have any um additional questions or anything like that. Dr. Marco, what did you think about this platform? I, I actually love it. I like the opportunity to be live. I like the opportunity to have people come on as like a guest almost. Mm -hmm. I like the opportunity that it's yeah. to, to the right. We have comments that are just, you know, flowing and they, I love this. I think it's a great, great thing. Yeah. And this will all be, we're on the record here. So we're recording this and this will be available on, on uh, Dr. Marco's, uh, social media channels. Uh, uh, he's got um, dozens of videos available that have had um, hundreds of thousands of views. Uh, some really, you know, varied. I mean, we've produced a lot of very varied content over these last few years from demonstrating, you know, some good stretches for your legs and lower back. And, and we've got more of that coming to talking about nutrition and, and um, uh, the science of the brain. And, you know, we've, we've covered lots of, of really uh, great topics. So I, I encourage you to, uh, to go to the chiropractic source. The, the link is right there in, in the sidebar uh, in the comments. Um, and you can, you can see the whole video, uh, video library through, uh, through the site. So, um, so Dr. Marco, we appreciate your time today i appreciate your time uh, no problem always a pleasure uh seeing you i like seeing you much better in person than <laughs> virtually because you can't adjust me right now you no, can't read through the true. screen and give me an adjustment so i will have to wait till tomorrow mm -hmm. um for All right, excellent um okay so thank you uh everyone uh who joined us um and uh, those of you watching on replay uh, follow Dr. Marco uh, on Blab and follow me on Blab. That way you'll be notified uh, whenever we're going live. Okay. Thanks, uh, everyone, for joining us. Thanks.